This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Is it? <gasps> we just got a flashback! We just got a flashback! We just got a flashback! Now the game gets good! <laughs> yes! Oh, I did Okay, this seems to be kind of shorter than the Michiru and Sachi routes, then. Either that or we're just getting the flashback a lot earlier, but... Alright, buckle in, everybody. It's, this is generally going to be a long scene, but it's going to be pro... I think it's going to be pretty good. The summer sun scorched the ground beneath our feet. In the heart of the ancient capital, we walked uphill, following the road away from the station's eastern exit. I was talking, casually, of trivial things. <laughs> Looking up at the person holding my hand, I smiled. In contrast to my cheerful chattering, the woman walking at my side had a clouded expression on her face. Her profile was beautiful, but cold, almost like that of a marble statue. The same words, repeated in the same tone, as if she was playing back a recording. Not understanding what was signified, or what that signified, I continued to speak. That trivial little event must have made me very happy, because I just kept on talking. Sentence flowed into sentence with barely a pause for breath in between. Matching the rhythm of my skipping steps, I pattered on faster and faster, filled with innocent excitement. First, her feet came to a stop. And without turning to look at me, her face still in profile, my mother finally answered. Her quiet voice emerged only to melt away into the squawking of the cicadas. Oof. Two pleasures, the skipping of the conversation, abruptly taken away from me. I hesitated uncertainly, not sure where to direct my gaze. But soon I found a clear path forward, and my hesitation gave way to a re reply. It was the phrase, I'm sorry. How many times had I spoken those words by then? Even when I'd done nothing wrong, even when I'd done nothing at all, those words offered an exit from any uncomfortable moment, and above all else, they lightened the burden on my mother's heart. Mumbling those words had always been the best that I could do at times like those. And my mother, in turn, offered me the same soft words of apology. In retrospect, it might very well have been her fault that I developed a habit of replying on the words, I'm sorry. She spoke the phrase so frequently, it was probably only natural that I'd begun to imitate her. A cold profile. A rigid face, locked in position, never turning to me. Speaking a few words with nothing but a slight movement of her lips, my mother began to walk once more, her strides even smaller than usual. Hmm. This is sad already. With a nod, I stepped forward at my mother's side, slipping halfway under the shadow cast by her parasol. As the shade swayed with her steps, the blazing sun flickered before my eyes like a movie shot on cheap film. We walked in silence through the midsummer heat, surrounded by the voices of the cicadas. Man, they're being loud! <laughs> beep, 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 beep! I squeezed my mother's hand tightly, very tightly, as if that connection was the only thing in the world I could rely on. Oh no, I, this is not the end of the route. This is just where we're getting Yumiko's main flashback of why she is the way she is. And in my experience, the flashback in Sachi's uh, route and the flashback in Michiru's route were like my two favorite parts of the route. So, I got high hopes for this one. My mother, Misako, was born into the Kaw Kaw Kawamoto family, owners of a real estate business in the ancient city of Kamakura. After graduating from university, she accepted an arranged marriage to my father, Sakaki Michiaki. She was 25 years old. The Kawamoto were small-time landowners, and their business had fallen into financial problems. When their only daughter married the young president of the East Beach Railways, a company that had taken complete control of the regional railroad network, the Kawamoto family treated it as a miracle comparable to winning the lottery. Oh. Oh, th this seems like it's going to be a happy, healthy marriage right here. What arranged marriage isn't? I don't want dinner. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I 
はい用意してありますすぐに支度する三十分後に出るから玄関に出して小島に渡しておいてくれはいどうしたあ、oh. This is sad. My father was a complete workaholic with more than one house to return to. Uh oh. He only came to see us once a week and never stayed longer than an hour. At that point, I hadn't so much as held a conversation with him. All I could remember were brief moments of eye contact in the hallway when we passed each other by. I can't understand that. Like. Like, don't get me wrong, I definitely get. Loving your work and wanting to like put a huge amount of time into your work. Like, I totally get that. I don't get why you wouldn't want to be with your children, though. I just can't understand that.、Uh, oh well. I mean, there are different people out there. I can still remember the way he looked at me. There was no emotion in his gaze, not even contempt, almost as if he didn't even realize something was there. His eyes were frighteningly. Empty. Well, he also keeps them closed pretty much all the time, so I'm not sure if you ever really have seen his eyes before. My room in that house was pointlessly large. Spacious as it was, it hadn't been made for a child to live in. The bed and closet were both adult sized. For the most part, it looked like nothing more than just another guest room. A child's desk, a haphazardly purchased assortment of stuffed animals and toys. These were the only objects that suggested otherwise, and they felt deeply out of place. <laughs> Well, that, you know, that is a valid answer. Affairs, that definitely complicates things. Hmm. I stood in front of my mirror, practicing many different facial expressions, earnestly thinking over a problem with no solution. Oh, this is so sad. Alone in a room far too large for me. I thought about the stone faced father I barely knew. How could I catch his attention? How could I make him realize I was even there? Children need their dads and their moms. Within that, set, within that staid and conservative railroad family, a daughter bore a little weight. My mother's marriage had seemed a blessing for the Kawamoto family, but when she gave birth to me, it quickly became an uncomfortable topic. Her job had been to give birth to an heir to inherit the East Beach Empire. Instead, she had produced a daughter, at best, a potential tool for political marriage. No one was to blame for that, but it was still a deep disappointment to those around her. Ooh, that is. This is horrible. My father had treated his new wife very kindly at first, but after I came into the world and he learned that my mother was too physically frail to endure many pregnancies, he became noticeably brusque and distant. That transformation must have hurt my mother deeply. After it began, she grew gradually weaker in body and spirit, until finally she could no longer manage to take care of father's personal needs. My mother returned to her parents when I was six years old. She had endured as best she could, just desperate not to leave a bad impression on my father's family. But my mother was fundamentally a sheltered and fragile woman. Putting aside her physical condition, her mind had been worn down to the point where she could simply no longer cope. And so, one hot midsummer day, she gathered our luggage, took my hand, and left the Sakaki house. It wasn't a joyous homecoming for anyone involved. After an exchange of indescribably uncomfortable greetings, they began an equally awkward conversation. Dane, whoever voiced Misako, A plus job on nailing the, like, just empty, emotionless voice. It was obvious at a glance that my mother couldn't possibly go back anytime soon. Still, my pragmatic grandparents wanted their daughter back with the Sakaki family before the wound of separation grew too deep. My mother may have wanted to return herself, even knowing that she was no longer capable of enduring that life. 
There was a slight edge of frustration in her voice as she vaguely affirmed my grandparents' words. They left me out of the conversation so completely that I began to feel invisible. In the end, I couldn't help but call out. When I spoke, my mother's hand twitched around mine, as if only just realizing that she'd been pulling me along at her side. As if she'd been trying to forget an unpleasant reality by averting her eyes from it. Still not looking in my direction, my mother muttered those words quietly. I tried out the greeting I had practiced for Dad on my grandparents. Their responses were stiff and awkward. They didn't so much as smile at me. It had already been decided that my mother would be hospitalized. Originally, the doctors had recommended admitting her to a psychiatric ward, but her return home under the cloud of a separation would no doubt become the subject of gossip in the area. Who knew what people would say about a mental illness on top of it all? Instead, Mom returned home under the superficial cover of poor health and entered a general hospital. This is so sad and screwed up in so many ways. My grandparents had been busy enough with their struggling business. Now they had new burdens on their hands, and they made no attempt to hide their exhaustion. The complaining began on the very first day. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely not going to have a bad effect on the daughter. Yeah, th thanks, Grandpa, yes. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's so many kinds of messed up. During the years I spent living with my mother's family, my grandparents never showed me anything like affection. In retrospect, I was an unwanted burden, a symbol of failure. I suppose they hardly had any reason to welcome me, but even so, it was a form of cruelty. Misako, the two of them seemed to quarrel virtually every minute of every day, right until I left the house. They were considerate enough to not behave this way around my mother, but their unwanted grandchild was a different story. Raw emotions flew back and forth as if I wasn't even there. Mm. When I was inside the house, I couldn't help hearing unpleasant conversations. It was a small mercy that, one of, that we had... One of the spacious gardens so typical in country homes. I'd always slip out there when I saw my grandparents talking with serious expressions on their faces. I passed the time scratching on the ground with tree branches. Those scribbles in the dirt became an escape. A portal to a vague, faraway world. Recalling what I'd seen through the window that day, I moved the point of the tree branch through the soil. Recalling my few happy memories, I drew them out one by one, over and over hoping to make them even slightly more vivid in my mind. My drawing improved quickly in pursuit of a clear and unmistakable exit from reality. Okay, uh, Simpsons are us. I'm w if this is anything like the previous two routes, this this is going to be a multiple hours of backstory. And we're probably just seeing the beginning of it. But yeah, th this is what I'm talking about. Like The writing in these flashback portions is really good. It's really engrossing. And then the, the rest of the game is just like... Not, <laughs> for the most part. I carefully combed my shoulder-length hair and tied it back with a rubber band. I hadn't particularly been trying to grow it out, but once I understood that haircuts cost money, I'd simply allowed things to take their own course. Hey, I like long hair. Long hair is beautiful. Not to imply that my grandparents were keeping me in rags. They were far too vain for that. I always had the minimum necessary to look respectable. But ever since I'd grown old enough to understand my position, it was difficult to muster the slightest interest in fashion. 
I opted for plain, dark clothes. The more inconspicuous, the better. My hair falls straight to the shoulder in the simplest possible style. As a child, I wanted nothing more than to be noticed, but at some point I'd begun to seek refuge in my own on it. And I always have trouble saying this word! <laughs> Anonymity. I don't think I said it right. Why is that word so difficult for me to say? I, like, I can say anonymous, but I cannot say this word. Anonymity. Anonymity. I... Anonymity. Anonymity. Okay, that's how you pronounce it. Good grief. <laughs> I'm probably going to forget how to say that. <laughs> Pausing under the withered uh, eaves... Let me try that again. <clears throat> Pausing under the weathered eaves, I offered a farewell to no one in particular, then walked off alone. I had grown tall. I was wearing a middle school uniform now. Nobody had commented on either fact. Ever since arriving at that place, I had been alone. There were always people in the house, but I was alone. Who's Toshi? As I left the house, I found Toshi-san waiting outside. Toshi-san was an old woman who had looked after my grandparents' family for many years as their housekeeper. Even when the business fell on hard times and could no longer afford the expense, she stayed in the house next door, taking care of us without any compensation. Toshi-san is the hero that we need, but we don't deserve. I wasn't her employer, but she always called me Miss in a kindly tone of voice. She was the only person in my life who showed me real affection. Shout out to Toshi-san. We, we all need a Toshi-san in our life. Aww. Oh, hey! This is the school that Sachi set on fire! <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same assets. This is also the school that Michiru went to. Again, probably different school, but same asset. I didn't talk with anyone at my middle school. Or rather, I couldn't. It was an insular place where relationships had long since been firmly established, offering, often mirroring the connections between parents. Someone abruptly wedged in from the outside had very little hope of fitting in. I hate it when I enter situations like that. I feel like so often it's like, oh, I go to like this new place, like whether it's like a new church or back in the day, like new school area or like new homeschool group. Like you, by the time you arrive, you've already got the solidly cemented friend groups, and it's not like people are going to be rude to you, but you're not going to be the same level of friends with the people there that they are with each other. And it's just, it's, it's slightly isolating. I don't blame anyone for that. Like, it's just, it's just a fact, but it sucks when that happens. Much less for a quiet girl who had moved out of the country under circumstances like mine. None of the other children were friendly to me. I knew they talked about me behind my back. But after the years I'd spent alone with my grandparents, I suppose I'd grown used to such casual disdain. My student life didn't feel particularly painful. It was merely empty. I filled the vast stretches of empty time by drawing pictures. It was a habit I picked up as a means of escaping into fantasy, but as I came to accept reality, the images changed gradually into simple landscapes. Not to say that I was viewing things more positively now. I'd simply grown numb. The contents of my drawings mattered less to me than the time I could kill moving pencil over paper. I no longer looked for meaning in the art itself. My grandfather had a pile of empty sketchbooks, abandoned from the days when he had tried when he had time to pursue his hobbies. I made a rare request and took them as my own. Day in and day out, I filled their pages with dull landscapes. With mechanical movements, I drew hollow images of the hollow world. When school ended, I would make my way over to the hospital where my mother was staying. The hospital was further from my grandparents' house than my middle school. To reach it, I had to walk a good two kilometers, first descending a slope, then climbing back up. Uphill both ways! I didn't have a bicycle, and asking for bus fare would have been unpleasant, so I always traveled that f road on foot. Of course it wasn't pleasant, but I developed an obstinate streak in my own right. That hike had become a part of my daily routine. A familiar nurse called out to me as I walked down a familiar hallway. Hello. 
ご飯もちゃんと食べてるし。Oh, that's nice. そうですか。こうやって榊さんが毎日お見舞いに来てくれるからね。きっと。そんなこと。Equivocating with a weak smile, I nodded to the nurse and walked away. My mother's condition was always seesawing from improvement to setback. It wasn't the sort of disease that could be cured with some wonder drug. And in Mother's case, the doctors didn't entirely understand the causes of her illness, or even the reasons why she wasn't healing. There was no clear path to a complete recovery. Gee, this sounds like an awfully convenient illness for the purposes of this visual novel. Sounds also similar to another convenient illness in a different visual novel. By that point, I understood that my existence had a great deal to do with her sickness. My visits couldn't possibly have been helping her. It was probably just the opposite. I walked rapidly towards room 301 in the A ward. <laughs> in the A ward, there was a part of me that thought those visits were pointless, but without them, I would have lost the only thing I had left my origins. Even as I isolated myself behind an inconspicuous appearance, in that one place, I desperately sought some kind of a connection. My mother had been given a private room. The hospital's administrator was an old acquaintance of my grandfather, so it had been arranged at a considerable discount, or so our gossipy neighbors believed. It was a pure white room, largely empty except for the plain medical bed standing by the window. My mother passed her days lying there. There was no medical reason she couldn't go out, but she never tried. <laughs> My mother greeted me with the most convincing smile she could force onto her face. But that face didn't turn toward me. <laughs> Setting up a folding chair at her bedside, I began to speak. Her physician had asked me to fill the visits with conversation. Even the silliest little things will do. Just keep talking to her, please. <laughs> But I filled every moment with silly chat for a different reason entirely. <laughs> The conversation was almost entirely one sided. My mother's responses were mostly monosyllabic. It was difficult to tell if she was even listening. Even so, I continued to chatter away. Eventually, I ran out of things to talk about and changed the topic to the weather out of desperation. But by then, even the monosyllabic responses had trickled to a halt. Yeah, this is becoming accurate to a lot of the small talk I engage in. Time flowed by in silence. One minute of stillness. Three. Five. Finally, my mother slowly opened her mouth to speak. Even before the words came, my body twitched in alarm. <laughs> When my mother spoke to me, it was always to deliver an apology. That was why I babbled away so persistently. I didn't want to give her the chance to speak. Folding the chair with a few practiced movements, I leaned it against the small shelf on the wall. I came to this place in search of connection, and every day I went home with nothing but disappointment. To be honest, these visits were painful for me. Sometimes I thought about how much nicer it would be to just stop coming entirely. But without my faint connection to my mother, I would be adrift in a sea of nothingness. I had no choice but to hold stubbornly to that single lifeline. I wasn't under any illusions that my conversations with mom were doing her any good. In fact, her physician had begun to indirectly allude otherwise. Something along the lines of, You don't have to come every single day, dear. But I was afraid. What if my mother did recover? If I abandoned her now, she might not take me with her when she returned to our old home. I didn't have many pleasant memories of that place, but at least there was something other than an object of scorn. <laughs> at least there I was. At least there I had something I had, like an identity, and I couldn't return unless my mother took me with her. I hated myself for those selfish thoughts, but I didn't stop visiting. Pushing everything that had brought us out there out of my mind, I clung stubbornly to the childish hope. Of a happy ending waiting around the next corner. The first year of my middle school life flowed by aimlessly. The only thing I had gained in that time was a bit of a textbook knowledge. Apart from that, I hadn't learned a thing. I'm fairly sure my grades were good. 
I didn't want to give anyone the chance to criticize me on that front. Becoming a difficult child would be too risky. My place in the world was tenuous enough as it was. Thinking back on it now, I might have been happier just running away. But having spent my entire life shut up inside a box, the idea of trying to escape didn't even occur to me. Hey, Infinity Yen. Welcome. What visual novels have I played on stream? I've been playing this one, and I played Clanad, as well as Doki Doki for Halloween. And then um, I've played the Ace Attorney series. I've uh, My sister and I have uploaded videos of that. Very, very fun. I, I enjoy visual novels. Just as one year ago, I would said goodbye to no one in particular and left the house alone. Nothing had changed. The scenery was the same. My life was the same. Everything in that country town was static. That morning when Toshi-san handed me my lunchbox, I found myself grumbling a few rare complaints about my situation. The targets were mainly my grandparents. We'd been living together for many years now, and still they only spoke to me when it was absolutely necessary. Every moment I spent in that house made me feel as if I was slowly suffocating. Yeah, I've completed the uh, Sachi route first, and then the Mishiru route, and then this is the last one I'll be doing. I have no interest in doing the other two routes. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how long this flashback is, because this is a blind playthrough, but I'd wager we still have a good amount left. Like I said... Oh, thus far, my favorite character is definitely Toshi, so... <laughs> no question. Out of, like, the main six characters... <sighs> wow. Uh... I can't believe I'm saying this, but probably either Michiru or Yumiko. I have pretty big issues with all the other characters. <laughs> Nothing about our household had changed in years. As always, our lifestyle was dependent on Toshi-san's quiet assistance. She took care of all of us without a single complaint. But I hadn't seen my grandparents show her gratitude for everything she did. Not even once. Toshi-san's son, who lived with his wife in the neighborhood, clearly wanted to pry his mother away from the unrewarded servitude in the to the Kawamoto family. I'd overheard them having a heated fight on the topic. Our life was the same as it had always been, but beneath the surface it was slowly coming apart at the seams. One day I was making my way along a sloping road I had walked once with my mother, bombarded by the cries of cicadas. The area around my grandparents' home was a district with strict regulations on the height and variety of buildings, so the scenery hadn't changed much in the years since my mother entered the hospital. It was picturesque in a way that seemed to appeal to the rich people. Many city dwellers had their second houses nearby, but I could never come to enjoy the scenery. It always left me cold. Amine's Root's interesting, even if you don't like her, I would try it. Eh, I don't think so. <laughs> One feeds for sure, there's no way in heck I'm doing Machina's Root. I, I don't think I could physically get through that route. Amine's Root, I, I, again, I don't think so. <laughs> this game is interesting, but... Eh, I, don't, I don't know. I won't completely discount the possibility, but I'm definitely not planning on playing it. The things that mattered to me changed for the worse, but the things that I hated, the things that left me cold, never seemed to go away. Driven by frustrating, indistinct feelings of powerlessness, I began to walk faster. But with a flinch of surprise, my legs suddenly came to a halt. Oh, hi, reporter. <laughs> Oh, 
ちょっとおじさんの話に付き合ってもらえないかな。Does that mean I'm not playing Fruit of Grisea after this route ever again? I'm not gonna say I will never play it again, but I have no plans to continue it after Yumiko's route. Because again, the two remaining routes, Machina and Amine, those are my two least favorite characters by far. I'm not sure if I would enjoy playing either of those routes. After that moment of hesitation, my legs began to move once more, faster than before. Striding along almost like a race walker, I hurried down the road leading to my school. <laughs> Bruh, you take a hint. She don't want to talk to you. Bruh, you gotta stop. You need to leave. <laughs> Man, this guy just don't know how to take a hint! Coming to an abrupt halt, I turned to face the man. Oh, this ain't even the first- Wow! <laughs> Bruh! Yeah, that- Yes, you were! Oof. She, she just does, she does not like the name Yumiko. Wrecked! <laughs> no, maybe she's just getting that because you're being a dip wad. Stop being a wad of dip, bro. What's the thumping noise? Is that the thumping of the footsteps? Or that might be me moving in my chair. Or maybe it's your imagination. There was one significant change in my stagnant life. A reporter from a gossip magazine, whose job seemed to consist of digging for information on my father, was making a habit of loitering around me. I had first met him during the winter of my first year in junior high. At the time, I was still comically naive. He approached with kind words and sympathy. Two things I wasn't used to getting, and convinced me to open up to him about my family's circumstances. Pathetic as it was, I didn't realize it was all for an article until the moment my grandmother threw the tabloid in my face and delivered a furious scolding. Humiliated and bitter, I swore to myself to never again discuss personal matters with strangers, or to trust their compassion. And despite it all, the very same journalist had the nerve to show his face in front of me again. Every time something happened, he'd come around sniffing for scraps of information. Speaking with him felt like brushing against an enormous and particularly slimy leech. I marched ahead as quickly as I could, one fierce step after another, trying to shake off the lingering residue of our encounter. But then again, the place I was hurrying to wasn't exactly pleasant in its own right. <laughs> 